covering something of an interesting topic. The show in question is a brand new show from Disney revolving around a brand new Disney princess for kids. The Disney princess line is a huge source of debate and discussion in feminist circles and this new show is no exception. The topic at hand is princessing. Is it okay or does it enforce negative gender roles and stereotypes and how one show in particular fits into all of this? Let's begin, shall we? Sophia the First. I was a girl in the village doing all right. Then I became a princess overnight. Now I gotta figure out how to do it right. So much to learn and see. Up in the castle with my new family. In a school that's just for royalty. A whole enchanted world is waiting for me. I'm going to start off by saying that Sophia the First is utterly adorable and there's definitely a charm there that you can't help but gravitate to. Sophia is just a really sweet character and they have done an excellent job of keeping her relatable and well-rounded. That said, she has one big glaring fault in the eyes of many a concerned feminist parent. She is a princess. Many people feel that Disney and other brands seeking to emulate Disney are feeding children a very sexist world view. To say nothing of the fact that many princesses need to be rescued and tend to find their life's fulfillment in the form of a charming prince, the problem more so seems to arise from the obsession and worship of the position itself. More specifically, royalty, glamour, and vanity, as children have little knowledge or interest in what the position of princess actually entails. All they know is that it comes with gorgeous gowns and happily ever after endings. And this is where the problem lies, in the fact that princess culture has a very heavy emphasis on physical beauty. I have mentioned before that this is one of the things that makes My Little Pony's handling of the princess trope so very refreshing, because Twilight Sparkle essentially is granted the title of princess not based on how she looks, but on how good of a friend she is to others. The other objection to princessing is the high emphasis on glitz and glamour that translates later in life to an obsession with celebrities and material possessions, rather than on more important things in life. It's become such a hot topic, and Sesame Street has even famously run a little segment discussing it. I want a career as a princess. Career! Abby, pretending to be a princess is fun, but it is definitely not a career. Now, in regards to Sophia. Sophia is a regular girl in the village until one day her mother marries the king and she becomes a princess and has to learn all about the ins and outs of being royalty. Sophia herself as a character is spectacular, but she could have been just a spectacular character without being a princess for no other reason than that girls like princesses. The premise may be a tad shoehorned, but it doesn't actually bother me, and here's why. It's a very common trope in storytelling to feature a character that is notable for one reason or another. You need to give your audience a reason to care about the main character, and this can be kind of difficult to do. The easiest way to make your character someone that people give a crap about is to make them someone of note, in this case, royalty. You can do the same sort of thing by establishing things the character has done in the past. For instance, Robin Hood is notable and interesting as a lead because he's a hero who steals from the rich and gives to the poor. If your character hasn't done anything yet to make them noteworthy, it's very simple to instantly get the audience's attention by making them someone of high stature. This is why princesses sell so well. The other option for making your character notable is to have them instantly doing something interesting, hence why Aladdin opens with Aladdin running from the guards for stealing bread. But this is trickier and takes fancier writing. Now you may have noticed that the two characters that I mentioned for being notable based on actions rather than status are both male, and this does seem to be a trend in media that we tend to see more passivity in our female leads. So that definitely does reflect a cultural mindset. Now, it is not uncommon at all to use very simple, basic concepts in children's storytelling, such as a good person is beautiful. The physical beauty here is meant to be a symbol for the inner beauty, and you will usually find that princess stories do tend to focus on inner beauty. Cinderella
Cinderella is kind and gentle. Belle is patient and understanding. Once again, passive traits, but positive ones. And I feel that the passivity is a larger discussion about female characters in the media in general and not necessarily princess genre specific. And in the case of Sophia specifically, the moral lessons taught by the show are excellent and things that I would want any kid to be learning. Several episodes revolve around how to make friends with someone who is shy. They deal with issues of bullying from several angles, such as standing up for someone when they are being bullied, or another episode will have Sophia in the role of the bully and learning why it's not okay to bully others. The very first episode, in fact, deals with gender roles when Sophia is told that she can't participate in Pegasus racing because she's a girl, and Sophia forges ahead with what she wants to do anyways. Now, on the technical side of things, the show doesn't look nearly as good as I would expect from a company like Disney. It is CGI, which is disappointing, but it's not even really great CGI. Everything looks kind of plasticky, and I'd have hoped for better visuals from Disney. I do, however, quite enjoy the style and the character designs themselves. The songs are really hit and miss. Every episode has to have a musical interlude, and they don't always fit and are often incredibly painful to sit through. Of course, not every kid's show can have, say, Daniel Ingram writing the songs. The story writing is quite good, as I said, with some great moral lessons and some pretty decent dialogue. The voice actors are all great and are really bringing these characters to life. Disney does seem to be aware of the issues with the princess genre and seem to be trying to spin it a little bit. In the end, I do see the issues that are being raised concerning princess culture and I understand the concerns surrounding it. But I also happen to be a girl who really loves lacy frilly dresses and medieval castles. Those things are pretty. I can't exactly stand here and complain about how terrible it is that little girls want to dress up in princess dresses. I do too! But what we can do is try to teach young girls balance. That while princess dresses are perfectly nice and fun, there are more important things in life than how pretty you are and how rich you are. Media was never intended to be the sole thing that we derive life lessons from. I do think that this balance is what Sophia the First seems to be trying to strike, and for what it's worth, I think it's succeeding.